We all have busy lives and fitting dog training into your life can be a challenge. Today in our second episode of training in five minutes and five feet of space, I'm gonna teach Mac, the nine-year-old Border Collie who's never had any obedience training, how to stay. I'm Steve, this is Mac. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. Now this is Mac, and you may have seen Mac in uh, some of our other videos. Mac has, uh, spends a lot of time herding sheep and doing a lot of work that a lot of Border Collies do, but Mac has never been in an obedience class, and he has never been taught a lot of the foundation stuff that we're gonna do today. Today, what I wanna do is spend a little time teaching your dog how to stay. It's a very handy skill to have your dog be able to hold position while you do something else. Now, because he doesn't have any understanding of this, we're gonna take a few minutes and go back right to the foundation of things. Because Mac doesn't know any of the foundation, I need to spend a little time teaching him to sit at my side. Uh, having my dog understand that holding that position at my side is sort of step one. And you can see he doesn't really know where to go. He's just kind of hanging out. He's a lovable guy. But I'm gonna use just my leash and a little guidance to bring him to my side and I'm gonna place him in a sit. Now, what I need him to do is once he is in that sit, I'm gonna loosen up on my leash and allow him to make a choice. And as long as he chooses to hold that sit, I'm gonna reward him for it. If he gets up, however, I'm gonna use that leash to guide him right back. So I'm simply gonna bring him into my side. My right hand comes close to the clip. I'm gonna say sit and tuck him right into me. Then I'm gonna loosen up on that leash and I'm gonna stand up. Good boy, good job. So he's getting up. I'm gonna just repeat those steps and place him right back in that sit. He's gonna lie down because he's really not sure what's going on. We're just gonna help him sit. Good sit. Oops, so he gets up, and you'll notice I'm just calmly following through every time. Yes, good boy, excellent boy, good job. You'll notice I didn't say yes until he actually committed to holding the sit. Yes, good boy. And now I'm rewarding him over and over and over again to let him know he's doing a great job. Now you'll notice my leash is loose as I'm doing this. Uh, our tendency sometimes would be to hold those dogs in the sit. I wanna give him that slack and the opportunity to choose to either get up or to hold the sit. And again, if he were to get up, you're being a really good boy right now, I would simply place him right back in that sit. As long as he's holding the sit though, I'm gonna to continue to yes and reward him. Good boy. His job is to hold the sit until I give him permission to get up. So I'm gonna give him permission now. I'm actually gonna take a little food, I'm gonna put it right on his nose and tell him, okay, good boy, and encourage him out of that sit. Last week we did these exercises in this little space with little hippie shake, the uh, put toy poodle. This week I've got Mac, the nine-year-old border collie. All these exercises can be done in a little bit of time and a little bit of space. You know, like your lab in the living room, or the collie in the kitchen, or your wolfhound in the washroom. SD Cruiser, maybe you are right. Maybe the wolfhound in the water closet isn't a great idea. Okay, maybe I need a little bit more space for that dog. The point is we want you to do these exercises uh, that fit in times that fit into your day in little bits and pieces so that you and your dog can be successful. Mac now has a little bit of an understanding that his job is to hold the sit at my side. And now I'm going to do this, but I'm going to create a little bit of distraction for him to really prove his understanding. I've got this really exciting rainbow unicorn toy here, and I'm going to put it somewhere where he can see it. And as long as he holds the sit, I'm gonna to continue to reward them. If he gets up though, I'm simply gonna place him right back in that sit. So here's first step. I'm gonna bring him to my side. I'm gonna tell him sit, loosen up on the leash. Good boy, good sit. I'm gonna yes and reward that, good sit. Now I'm gonna take this toy and I'm gonna put it down on that table or chair where he can see it. Sit, good sit. Yes, good boy, good choice, buddy. Now he made a great choice there. He looked at that toy and looked right back at me. That's exactly the choice I want him to make. And as long as he continues to do that, I'm gonna reward him. Now, he's doing a great job. So it's important now we try and proof his understanding a little bit further. So I'm gonna release him, I'm gonna have him sit again, and then I'm gonna move him a little closer to that toy. Oops, buddy, sit. Good, sit, good. Now you notice while I'm talking to you, that's where he's sort of losing his understanding. It's important when you're working through these that you're focused on the dog all the time for that short period of time. Yes, good sit. So I'm gonna do a little reset and we'll try it a little closer to the toy. Remember, these exercises are something that you can do in just a few minutes. You know, maybe between the time you drop the kids off at school and head to work or even before the kids get up. They don't take much time or space. So to make this harder for him, I'm gonna ask him to get in and sit at my side again, but I'm gonna put the toy on the ground a little bit closer to him to help prove his understanding. So first things first, I'm gonna use my leash to guide him into my side. I'm gonna place him in my little sit, sit. 
Good boy, sit. Now you'll notice he's leaning on me. This is a thing that a lot of dogs will do. Um, I wanna make sure he's sitting entirely on his own. So if he leans on me, I'm just gonna direct him up and away from me, put a little bit of slack back in that leash and help him from there. Good sit. So he's leaning again. I'm just gonna direct him away. I know, he's a very loving guy and he thinks that's great. Good boy, good sit. Yes, good boy. Now I'm gonna tell him sit, I'm gonna put this toy down on the ground. Now he's shifted already, no big deal. I'm gonna keep my criteria really high. I'm gonna tuck him right back where I want him. Sit, sit buddy. And then we'll go from there. Good sit, excellent boy. Now I'm gonna take my toy, I'm gonna to put it on the ground. He gets up, I'm gonna tuck him right back to my side where I want him, sit, sit buddy. You're a banana. He's being a really floppy puppy right now, which is great. I'm not mad at him. He's only doing this because he doesn't know. My job is to follow through. Now he's sitting nicely on a loose leash. Now I can start to reward him. Yes, good sit. Yes, good sit. Good boy. What a good puppy dog. Now one thing I want to highlight. First things first, he's getting a little wiggly, so I'm just going to tuck him back. You may notice every time I feed him, I'm feeding him in a direction that brings that focus back to me. The food comes from up high down to him and he's starting to really figure that out because he's looking up at me for the treats. So instead of giving him that treat, looking at that distraction or somewhere else, the treat comes up towards my face and down to him to help keep that focus. And he is doing a great job, very good job, and I'm gonna continue to reward. So for 60 or 90 seconds, you can practice this kind of exercise and prove through some of those distractions. This video, we're going to work on our stays, but I haven't said stay yet at all. It's important that I give my dog a solid foundation and simply a basic behavior at sitting at my side before I start throwing out another command uh, and expecting the dog to understand it. I am now going to start to introduce the word stay. Now stay to me is very important. It's very black and white. It literally means stay right in that spot. And it also means I'm going to leave you but I'm going to come back to you. And that's a really important thing for us to remember when we're teaching our dogs. Stay always starts with our dog at our side and it always ends with us returning back to their side. So here's what I'm gonna do. He's starting to get that understanding. Hi buddy, how are you? He thinks this is a great game now. I'm simply gonna bring him to my side and I'm gonna have him sit, sit, good sit. Now I'm gonna tell him stay and all I'm gonna do right now is turn right in front of him. And as long as he holds that sit, I'm gonna praise him and yes, and reward him. But if he gets up at all, I'm going to quickly place him back in that sit. So here's what it looks like. Stay, stop sign signal with no food in my hand, turn in front of him. Yes, good, stay, good, stay. And I'm gonna pivot right back beside him. Good, stay. Now, he shifted a little bit. I was actually about to reward him, but I wanna be very black and white with him with my expectation. So I'm just gonna tuck him back exactly where he started. That doesn't seem like a big deal, but to your dog, if you give them an inch, pretty soon they're gonna to start to take a mile, so it's important that I put him back exactly where he was. Stay. I'm gonna pivot in front of him. Yes, good, stay. Stay. Pivot right back beside him. Yes, good, stay. Good boy. And I'll try it one more time. Stay. Pivot right in front of him. Yes, good, stay. Now he shifted a little bit that time. I'm gonna just tuck him right back where I need him. Stay. Good, stay. He's shifting again, and this is gonna happen. Your dog's gonna get interested in other things, and again, our job is to follow through each and every time. Stay. Good, stay, stay. Yes, good boy, very nice. And again, in 30 or 90 seconds, he's been doing a great job. Put a little food in his nose, okay and I can release him and give him permission to get up. I use okay as my release word for Mac or any of my dogs to let them know that the exercise is over. And that's a really important point when it comes to stays. Oftentimes dogs struggle because they're not told when it's okay to get up. We spend so much time teaching them how to hold the position. It's also important they understand that we're ending the exercise and giving them permission to go and do other things. So even anytime I'm practicing anything, whether it be a stationary exercise or something else, when I wanna let him know it's okay, the job is done and we can do something else, I give him that clear, okay, and then he can move. So part of my five minutes has been spent 
teaching my dog what stay means. And um, Mac here is starting to get it. He's starting to understand. So I'm gonna start to push him a little bit. Again, I'm not gonna push him to the point where he's unsuccessful. I'm gonna be smart and I'm gonna add little teeny distractions in a moment to help proof his understanding. So I'm gonna bring him to my side. I'm gonna tuck him into that sit. Good boy, buddy, sit. I'm gonna tell him stay. And I'm gonna pivot right in front of him. First things first, I'm gonna remind him of his job so I can say yes, reward him for that stay. And I'm gonna try a little tiny distraction. I'm gonna shake my leash, yes, and reward, good stay. I'm gonna tap my legs, yes, and reward, good job. I might even bounce in place, yes, and reward. I'm doing one teeny little distraction and as long as he holds position, which he's doing a great job of, I'm immediately going to say yes and reward him. I'm not gonna distract until he fails. Oftentimes people add too much distraction too soon. So let's say I shake my leash and tap and jump up and down and do all sorts of things and he decides to shift towards me. This was my fault that he moved, okay? I added too much distraction. So I'm gonna guide him right back to where he was. Sit, good try buddy, excellent work. Now we'll go back to one little distraction. Yes, and reward, good boy. Again, bounce in place, yes, and reward. Very good job. And again, after 30 or 40 seconds, I can remind him to stay again, pivot right back beside him. Excellent job. Now he's leaning on me again, so I'm just gonna discourage that. Sit, good sit. Yes, good boy. And we're done now, so I can tell him, okay. If your dog is starting to really understand this and starting to understand that they can stay in the face of those distractions, we're now gonna make it harder. We're gonna to start to add a little bit of distance. And adding distance can be a real challenge for some dogs because we tend to make some mistakes that encourage them to break position. I'm gonna talk you through those right now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have Max sit at our side again like we've talked about. Sit, good sit. I'm gonna give him that stay command, that stop sign signal with no food in my hand. I'm gonna pivot in front of him. And as long as he's doing a good job, I wanna start on some success. So I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna give him a little treat. I'm gonna remind him stay and I'm gonna take one step back. And as long as he holds position, okay, this is perfect. He shifted forward towards me and this is common what happens when as soon as we start to add distance. If he shifts forward, no big deal, but what I'm gonna do is just quickly direct him back to where he was to start. Sit, good sit. Now I'm gonna take that big step that I took back and I'm gonna split it in half. Hey, leave it and sit, good boy. Yes, good boy. I'm gonna remind him sit and I'm gonna take a half a step back. Yes, I'm gonna say yes, but I'm gonna go back to him before I reach for food. That's really critical with dogs. If I was to be far away from him, pull out some food and lean it in towards him, he's probably gonna come up and get it from me, so I need to really help him. Now I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna tell him stay, take that half step back. Whoops, so he shifted. So I'm just gonna shift him right back to where he needs to be. This tells me he's not ready for too much distance yet. So I'm gonna stay a little closer right now to help him be successful. Stay. Yes, good stay. Good, stay. I'm gonna get a couple of successful repetitions holding still. Now I'm gonna try and add a little distance again. Stay. Yes, good stay. I'm gonna go back to him, reach for my food and reward. Stay, take that half step again. Whoops, so he shifted, no big deal. I'm gonna take a little step back, place him right back where I want him. Stay, good stay. Yes, good stay, good boy, stay. Yes, good stay. I am adding little baby bits of distance for him to be successful. It's my job to make him right. And I'm doing what this dog needs to do that. Stay, yes, good stay. Excellent boy, good, stay. Yes, good stay. So you'll notice with each step, I'm going a little bit further back, but I'm not always gonna move away. I might tell him stay and stay a little closer to really make him think that it doesn't matter where I am, his job is to hold that position. Yes, good boy, very nice. And I'm gonna end the exercise now because he's done a great job. So I'm gonna remind him stay. I'm gonna pivot right back beside him. Yes, good stay, good job, buddy. And again, now I'm ready to add, end the exercise. I'm gonna take out a little food to help him and just tell him, okay. Yay, good boy, buddy, good work. I had to stay pretty close to Mac 
in this little session to help him be successful. You know, in your house, maybe you can get from the dishwasher to the sink. Uh, if they're being successful, then by all means, move to the edge of that five foot space, really build on that distance. But if they're struggling with it, stay closer to them. One of the best things about training in small spaces for short periods of time is it really helps my timing in dog training. We know dogs learn within a second. And if I'm only two or three or four feet away from him, if he happens to make a mistake, when he does, I can quickly, within that second, try and get him back into that position. It really helps them understand what their job is at that moment. We know everyone has busy lives and the point of this video series is to help you fit your dog training into five minutes and five feet of space to help both you and your dog be successful. If you haven't seen our first video, click that card right there. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. And with that, I'm Steve, this is Mac. Happy training.